now today is all the blocks of Christian body in Lagos, in Nigeria, in Africa, and the rest of the world. So we have here today Higher Life Church, Deeper Life Church, Middle Life Church, All Round Church. Praise the Lord. Thank you, choir, can choir, peace be still. In your heart, in your life, in your families, in your church and denominations. Peace in Jesus' name. Fathers and mothers in the house, ministers and professionals, children of God, people of God, peace in your life. And peace in your family. And today, the Lord will raise you up. Don't expect to hear what you have always heard. Because if I came here and I told you what you always knew, there will be no point. But the Lord is going to drop something in your life. And so, when you hear something, I never heard that before. That's okay. That's why we came. And the Lord will transform the work of your hand. Amen. You will succeed. Amen. You will make progress. Amen. And what you thought you couldn't do today is the starting point. Amen. You will do in Jesus' name. Amen. By the way, tomorrow, we're going to have impartation on young people. Our youths, our students, our young adults. I've been talking to young people many years now. But as I prepared for the up, up, that is unlimited potentials. I just discovered what I don't think I'd focused on before. Because tomorrow, we're going to take your children, your church members, and these young people, the sky is the limit. Yeah. Encourage them, talk to them, speak to them, that tomorrow is specially dedicated to them. And of course, if you have a young mind yourself and you can tune on with a young mind respectfully i invite you yeah. you know if you can go back to the vision of those years and years and start all over again and as the youths are running you come look at me now i'm young at heart if you look at my, at my air, you'll think I'm old. <laughs> but you know, in the heart, in the mind, where the blood is running and flowing, there's a young man inside here. And that young man is eager and ready to move on and to fly with our young people. And so, if you want the gift of a young heart, men, women, I invite you to come. Your life will never be the same again. Now, for today, for today, we've been singing and praying, Lord, make me another Elijah today. Today, we're talking about Elijah. Power, fire power in your life in Jesus' name. Father, we come to you today. We come with great expectation. Lord, we lay everything upon the altar. And we're asking, Lord, you'll make an Elijah of your people at this time in Jesus' name. That's 
they will turn lives around. Their churches will turn around. Their communities will turn around. Every nation represented will be turned around by your people here in Jesus' name. Give us each and all the fire power. Confirm in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. I love you and God loves you more. Let, let's uh, sit down. Today we're looking at the 17th chapter of First Kings. First Kings chapter 17. I'm reading just verse 1. In verse 1 it says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Actually, the people of God and the nation of God, they were in a serious, serious situation. A great problem, national problem, that they didn't know how to come out of their problems. Spiritual problem, social problem, economic problem, family problem, community problem, tribe to tribe, tribal, uh, uh, tribal problem, and then the whole nation. The problem overwhelms them. And then, as everybody, there were many believers there. God himself said, I have 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to Baal, but of all the uh, 7,000 people, they were like jellyfish. They were like amphibians. They didn't have any backbone. One leg here, they complained, of course. They commented, of course. And they observed corruption in their land. And they, they, they said Baal worship in their land. Confusion in their land. But no one stepped out until one man, Elijah by name. And it says... We don't even know the name of his father, of his mother, of his tribe, anything. It just says, and Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead. And then it says, came and said unto Ahab, without any introduction to the palace, without any introduction to royalty, and without any permission from Ahab or Jezebel, he just appeared suddenly, and he said, Mark my word. He had the key in, in his hand. You'll have the key in your hand. He said, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand. It wasn't a wee man. A wee wee man. It was an isolated, unique individual. And he said, I stand before him. There shall not be dew nor rain all these years. And then he said, according to my word. Ahab, you may not agree, but according to my word, Jezebel, you may not sign this, and you may not cross the T and dot the I. It doesn't matter. He, Elijah, was in charge. The Lord is going to raise you up. You'll be in charge. In your community, you'll be in charge. In our nation, they may not vote for you. This one is not by vote. This one is by divine individuality that is taken by the Lord and sent by the Lord. The Lord will send you to places you never knew. The Lord will send you to people you have never spoken about. The Lord will send you. And when you go there, you'll go with a key in your hand. 
Look at Ezekiel chapter 22. And I'm reading from verse 30 there. Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30. And I sought for a man. This is God talking. He's the governor of the whole universe. And he is the governor of every continent and every community and every country. Yet, he does not do everything all by himself. For Sodom and Gomorrah, he had an Abraham. And for the children of Israel, he had a Moses. And for the people that went to conquer the land, he had a Joshua. And for somebody to conquer Goliath, he had a David. And for somebody to be able to turn everything around and prepare the minds of the people for Christ as Savior, he had a John the Baptist. And of course, for the salvation of the world, he had the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He's seeking for a man in our generation today at our time today he said and i sought for a man among them falls here in nigeria it's not an outsider that will come and turn our country around the man is here the woman is here i sought for a man among them in your community in your local church, in your company. It's not somebody from outside. I read about them, I Google, I search, I see that that's an expert there, that's an expert there. The person to turn your company, your life, your church, your ministry around is not over there, it's over here. Amen. Look at him sitting down there. Look at her sitting down there. I saw for a man among them that should make up the edge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. As we rise up, I don't want to say if we rise up, as we rise up. And when we rise up, our nation will not be destroyed. How many times we have sat down, folded our hands, and complained? We read the papers, we hear the radio, we watch the television, we hear the news on social media, and we just sit down there and we're looking outside our window for somebody to come and change our country. You are the candidate for change. Yeah. The person that God will say, I've been searching, I've been looking, now I got you. Yeah. This weekend, today, and of course tomorrow for young people, and then on Sunday, you know, I said on Sunday, you might think I don't want you to be in your church, but I believe God wants to do something. That all of our churches will get together, and if I can give you the key that God is revealing to me at this time, and you can come and bring all your people, don't worry about uh, offering. If we need to divide the offering, when we get there on Sunday, we'll give you all the money. It's not about offering. It's about you having the key in your hand. And then uh, when we finish on Tuesday, and you know you got it. I'm talking about you there. I said, you know you got it. You will go back. And because of the commitment and consecration and the sacrifice of this period, God will drop something in your life this country will change. Amen. Today, I'm talking to you on discovering dynamic men and women, of course, for a nation's darkest hour. A nation's darkest hour. Discovering dynamic men and women for a nation's darkest hour. Hour. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, a prepared minister, comma, professional for an uncommon task. Number two, 
the preserved model comma pattern with a unique treasure number three a powerful miracle comma proof of an undeniable truth number one number one a prepared minister a prepared professional for an uncommon task the task before elijah was uncommon unprecedented it wasn't like the regular thing i did that yesterday i did that the other week i did that the other year this was a task uncommon and yet god has a way of preparing you and i for an uncommon task look at verse one of that first kings chapter 17 and elijah a tishbite who was of the inhabitants of gilead said unto ahab as the lord god of israel liveth before whom i stand there shall not be dew nor rain these years but according to my word the man at the key to lock heaven and he said when i want rain for the nation i'll come back and open and he went away and the way we know Ahab and Jezebel normally they should have arrested Elijah you came here to say that because they had all those prophets of Baal around and they were militant and they were sharp-sighted but nobody could lay hands on Elijah your time has come if you have been afraid, if I say that, they will lay hands on me. The time will live now. It's not the time they will lay any hand on Elijah. Yeah. There might be difficulties everywhere. There might be challenges everywhere. But for God's chosen man, the one that is going to have the key and open the door of change and transformation for our country, for other countries, for Africa, and for every country in the world, you are preserved until your ministry is over. A new power, a new strength, a new vision, a new boldness and courage to go on carry on ministry and no evil hand will touch you and no evil eye will see you now as i talk about a prepared minister a prepared professional for an uncommon task there are three things we're looking at number one number one we're looking at the devastating problems in the land devastating problems in the land number two the dynamic prophet of the lord now when you have devastating problems in the land you cannot come sheepishly and sluggishly and be looking down and then your knees are shaking and your back you cannot bend if there is a devastating problem in the land anyone that is going to come and turn that around must not be a weakened person he must be a dynamic prophet of the lord and if you are not there yet you'll get there number three the daring prophecy without lingering the daring prophecy ahab had never heard a word like that from any man in the nation or from outside the nation since he was ruling on the in the land of israel it was a daring prophecy and without lingering he just delivered the message and he was off what a man 
and I look at you and I say, not the way you are now, the way you will be after God has touched you, transformed you, and mentored you, and modeled you. I say, look at him, what a man. Look at her, what a woman. A picture you've never dreamt of. A portrait you've never dreamt of. The Lord is going to take you. He'll remold you again. He'll make your life again. Your time has come. Let's look at number one there. Number one there, the devastating problems in the land. As we go back to the previous chapter, that is chapter 16 of uh, first kings verse 30 and he had the son of uh, Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him that's what brought the nation down and then in verse 31 it says in verse 31 and it came to pass as if it had it, it, it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat that he took to wife Jezebel, the one, the daughter of Esbel, king of the Sidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. Then we're told in verse 32, it says in verse 32, and he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. Right there in Israel, he built an altar for a foreign god. And then in verse 33, it says, And he helped me a groove, and he did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than any any of all the kings of Israel that were before him. That was what came in the land. What's the consequence of that? Look at Second Chronicles chapter 15, reading from verse 5. In Second Chronicles chapter 15, looking at verse 5, in those times there was no peace to him that went out, not to him that came in, but great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. This country, this community, this other country, and this other community, everywhere darkness filled the land, and it says, all those nations there was no peace and the people that went out or came in there was no security look at verse 6 there in verse 6 it says a nation was destroyed of nation that's what you call devastation insecurity destruction uncertainty everywhere and city of city for God did vex them with all adversity, all kinds of adversity. Look around you and think about what goes on all around. It's a nation in, the, in its darkest hour. It's a continent in its darkest hour. And yet, we're not permitted to just, you know, sit down and then wish for a change. Somebody is going to rise up. Yeah. And you are here. Yeah. I said you are here. Yeah. No other person will do your job. Yeah. No other person will take your place. Yeah. That leads me to number two there. Number two there is the dynamic prophet of the Lord. Of the Lord. Of the Lord. Somebody converted by the Lord. Somebody convicted by the Lord, somebody committed to the Lord, somebody consecrated to the Lord, and somebody who is confined to the Lord. He didn't put his hand in bail. He didn't put his life in all the foreign religion and the spiritual amalgamation in the land. He was a man for God and God alone. And if you can come out, and step out 
and come out of any connection with any other God but the God of heaven, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ becomes your God, you are converted to him. You are consecrated to him. You are committed to him. You are sold out completely unto him. There is no limit of what God can do in this land through you. The dynamic prophet of the Lord. Look at that again. It says in 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 1, And Elijah, the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead. Yes, it was of the inhabitants of Gilead. But none of those citizens of Gilead showed up. There was Je Jezebel. The, everybody was afraid of Jezebel. And then there was Ahab. Everybody was afraid of Ahab. And the only person that dared him, when he said, give me your vineyard, and I will give you a better one. I'll give you money if you want. And the fellow said, me, you think I'm like other people? I'll not give you my vineyard. And then he came back home. You know the story. He had pouch. And he had pity party, like a little child sucking. And then the wife said, what's the problem with you? Are you not the king? I'll give you the vineyard of Naboth. That man lost his life. Because of that, all the people in Gilead, all the people in the community, they kept quiet. I want to nurse my single life, miserable life, empty life, hungry life, jobless life, so I will not talk. But Elijah, a man for the hour, I have him in the house. I have her in the house there. A man, a woman for the hour. This is our hour. My brother, my sister, if you don't try so today, the bell will ring. Somebody else will come from behind and take your place. Nobody will take my place. What God asks of you at this time, you will do. There's a crowd here. Who am I talking to? You are the one I'm talking to. Mark my word. It will happen. And so, Elijah, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth. Elijah, come here. Talk to me privately because I want to be another Elijah today. Tell me, what do you mean? As the Lord God of Israel liveth. Elijah says, as long as life is with God and God cannot die. Is your God dead? The God of power. The God of all possibilities. As long as as he lives, mark my word, what I say to you, Ahab, will be fulfilled. And as you go and you carry the word of the Lord, and everywhere you go, and you have not your word, but his word, is alive to confirm that word. If you declare the word to a blind man, as long as God is alive, his blind eyes will open. As you declare the word to a man that is totally dejected and is like he's spending his last hour on earth and you declare the word, the life of the God who lives will come to that man. Through you, the dead will rise. Through you, the dying will come alive again. Keep the watch in your mouth. Don't allow anything, anyone, any circumstance take the word from you. And then it says, before whom I stand. It says, I stand before him 
before coming to Ahab. And if you have gone to the presence of the Lord and you have stood before him, if the God that gave us Jesus Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah, that lion spirit will enter into you. And so coming from the presence of God, before whom I stand, you can stand before anybody. But don't go out to stand before Ahab, Jezebel, before you stand before the Lord. And if you come every Sunday to your congregation from the presence of the Lord, all the people that are there and they are burning down and they have challenges and problems, just coming out and talking to them, a short time, life will come to them. Amen. Revival will come to them. Amen. Power will come to them. Amen. The people who are discouraged will come. Those who are despondent will come. Those who are in despair will come. Those who are dying will come. Those who are economically deprived they will come you come from the presence of the Lord and you come to them you will be a catalyst you'll be a change agent in the lives of your people in Jesus name and then it says there shall not be dew nor rain these years according to my word that's heavy elijah according to your word what do you mean by that number three here number three the daring prophecy without lingering according to my word can i just turn uh, you know think of something i like this to happen i like that to happen and then i just come to ahab and what i like what i wish what i think what i feel i come to tell ahab and jezebel and then i say according to my word ah, ah, that's not what happened look at deuteronomy chapter 11 and i'm reading from verse 16 Deuteronomy chapter 11 we're looking at verse 16 take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them verse 17 and then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you and he shot off the heaven that there be no rain and that the land yield not her fruit lest ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you you know what happened Elijah had read the word of God. He read it over and over until it saturated his heart, until it colored his view, until it replaced his own idea. He studied the word, he looked at the word, he read the word, he embraced the word, he possessed the word until that word became like his word like his servant elisha took off his clothes and threw it away and took the mantle of elijah elijah himself as kind of uh, disposed of his own word and he has taken away and thrown away his own idea and he read the word of God that if the nation of Israel went to serve any other God God himself in heaven it will withhold rain and dew from them and no rain will come that's what he had in his heart when you read the word of God 
when you are saturated with the word of God, when you have the word of God influencing your thoughts and your mind and your will and influences even your message that you don't have any message of your own, any idea of your own, any opinion of your own, any kind of wish of your own and you take the word of God and it saturates you completely and as you open your mouth what comes out is the word of God that becomes your word. You remember our man, our apostle, the apostle to the Gentiles in the New Testament, he said, according to my gospel, according to my gospel, is the gospel of God, is the gospel of Jesus, is the gospel of grace, is the gospel of our salvation, is the gospel that God sent from heaven. He read it, he imbibed it, he embraced it, he swallowed it, he digested it. He had no other sin but the gospel of God until he came to the Romans and then he told them something. He said, according to my gospel. That's what happened to Elijah. Elijah had that word and now he can say, Ahab, listen to me. You are not reading the Bible, I'm reading you don't understand the word of God I do. In fact, I and God now will say the same thing. And I tell you, all these years, a daring prophecy, because it came from God, it will not linger. He said, from today, there will be no rain and there will be no dew all these years according to to my word. I pray the word of God will become your word. Amen. It will be in your heart. Amen. It will be in your mind. Amen. It will saturate you. And when you speak out, you will speak in the faith in the power, in the strength of the unchanging word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. When you talk, it will be like Christ talking. And heaven will confirm that word. You know, uh, many people, they give uh, prophecies and they say, uh, this uh, coming year, this will happen, that will not happen. And then, as if you are a person that is analytic and you are following after events, you keep that word of prophecy. And then the time comes that they have been prophesying about, and lo and behold, nothing comes out of it. And then the following year again, they come in December, and they say that you know in January this coming year this will happen that will happen keep that paper and then the year comes and nothing happens what, that, what does that mean it means that that was their word without any connection with God but God will raise you up you will not be a careless talker a careless prophet you'll not be somebody just dreaming out things and looking at you know the events of affairs in the land and then you are making conclusion and you say because of what you see you see god spoke to me when god speaks to you god will do it according to my word and the lord did it a new day has come I said, a new day has come. You know, there are people, they come to you and they say, let me prophesy into your life. You look at their faces and you can see they are superficial. They are assuming. They are not spiritual. They don't know what they are talking. They don't even know the word of God. Let me prophesy in your life. No, thanks you. Thank you. I'm a child of God. Heaven has already prophesied into my life. And Christ has already prophesied into my life. I carry prophecy. I carry the word of heaven. And I know what is going to happen. I don't need anybody to come and tell me this will happen, that will happen. I know already what is going to happen. The Lord will give you assurance. You'll be so sure, you know, that your life, before you go to meet the Lord, this is what will happen. I come to point number two. Point number two, the preserved model, pattern with 
a unique treasure. I'm reading from verse 2 here in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 2. And the word of the Lord came unto him. He had delivered the word of the Lord unto Ahab. And the Lord did not tell him what was going to happen after that. You must count one before you count two. What he has said to you already, you must have the boldness and the courage to deliver that. It is after you have gone that first step, then the second step will come. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, look at verse 3. In verse 3 it says, over here, get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself and hide thyself and hide thyself by the brook cherries that is before Jordan. Look at that word on the line, those two words, hide thyself. Because Ahab will wake up. Uh, what happened to me? Why did I allow that man to go? And then he'll be searching for Elijah. Abadah said in chapter 18, there is no place, there's no country where my Lord Ahab has not sought for you. And when that community says they have not known where you are, it took an oath of them. Now, Elijah, you want me to go and tell Ahab, Elijah is here. And when I go to tell him, the Spirit of God will carry you and take you to a place I know not. And then Ahab will slay me. It was that serious. But all the intentions of Ahab, against your life you have come to nothing you are the beginning of the prophecy you'll be the finisher of the prophecy what you have started what you have declared and you said this will happen mark my word you will not die covid will not kill you you know COVID knows where to go. And it doesn't go to a man, a woman that has assignment from heaven, something to fulfill. Before you go to glory, you will finish. And so Obadiah said, there's no place where Ahab has not sought you. And if I go to tell him, and I lift up his mind that he will see you. And then he doesn't see you. He'll be so angry, he will kill me. So God said, Elijah, get thee haste. Turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook chariot that is before Jordan. And here we have our model. Here we have uh, our pattern with a unique treasure. And it was kept. It was preserved like God will preserve you. Yeah. Uh, look at three things here. Number one. Number one. On a citating response to the word of God. Number two. On questioning reliance on the wisdom of God. Number three, on limited resources of the wealth of God. Look at number one. Number one, on hesitating response to the word of God. You know, when God told Elijah and said, Get thee his, and then go and hide thyself by the brook Cheris that is before Jordan. Look at verse 4. It says in verse 4, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. 
Elijah did not ask the Lord, Lord, tell me again. Am I having the right knowledge about ravens? There's another word that we get from the word raven, ravenous. And ravenous, like the ravens, they eat up everything they see. And you have commanded the ravens who are ravenous, and they normally will devour and eat up everything, and they are the people to feed me there. He did not question God, and he did not hesitate. Now, Elijah, as a student of the writings of Moses, will know that the rivers are part of the unclean animals, that no Israelite should eat raven, because for them it was unclean. Now, there are people that do not know God, God did not say that ravens will not be of any use at all to Israel. He only said ravens will not be food. And the ravens are coming to bring the food. They are not, you are not going to kill them and eat them. I'm not asking you to eat ravens. I am saying I have commanded the ravens to feed you there by the brook. I pray God will give you understanding. Yeah. There are people that do not understand the word of God and they say, oh, that one is unclean. It cannot be of any service to me. That one is not like me. It's a foreigner to me. It cannot be of any service to me. You need to understand the word of God. Now, the ravens were to bring the food and also unhesitatingly, without any hesitation or without, you know, pulling back, Elijah did as God told him to do. You will do what God is telling you to do. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, so he went. God said, get up. He got up. Go. He went. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. Look at that. He did according to the word of the Lord. He had there will be no deal. There will be no rain. These years, according to my word. Now, if God is going to fulfill your word, you must fulfill the word of God. God shows you something and he says, repent of that. And you shake your head. And then you go out. You want to command. And you want to bind and lose. Uh -uh. You have not done the word of God. What he told you to do. Apologize for that turn around in that area be righteous by the grace of God, be washed in the blood of the Lamb, obey that and as you obey the word of the Lord the Lord will confirm your word <laughs> one of my friends many years gone by as we were growing up he was a militant preacher and I looked up to him, myself, at that time. And he was called to go and pray for somebody on the sick bed in the hospital. But my friend had done something. He told me himself later that he felt guilty about. And he was wondering, you know, I cannot tell the people I'm not going there to pray. Because they knew him to be a man of prayer. And so as he was going, he was thinking, well, God hear me. And how am I going to do now? I'm going to pray for the sick. And so he got there to the hospital at the bed there. And he knelt down first. And as he knelt down, on the, by the same bed where that uh, sick person was, he was quietly telling the Lord, Oh Lord, I'm sorry about that. Oh Lord, I'm sorry about that. Oh Lord, I'm sorry about that. Please forgive me and make my life a good life that will continue to serve you. 
He said in Jesus' name, Amen. He felt the peace of God and the forgiveness of God. He rose up now, wanting to pray for the man on the bed. And the man rose up and said, Thank you very much, I'm healed. <laughs> he had not even prayed for the man. He prayed for himself. As we obey the word of the Lord and do according as God has commanded, he will honor your word. Amen. No word from your mouth will fall to the ground. Amen. You'll be a man of authority. Amen. A woman of authority. Amen. A man of power. A woman of power in Jesus' name. Amen. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. So he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And then in verse 6, in verse 6 we are told, And the ravens brought bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. Now, Obadiah said he kept a hundred servants of God in a cave. And Jezebel was killing them. But he kept them and gave them bread every day. Obadiah did not have the resources that the ravens had for Elijah. You know, if you depend upon the Lord, he will take care of you. More than the rich people of the world and more than the servants of the leaders of the world can take care of you, he will take care of you. Amen. Nothing will be missing in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. And then he drank of the brook there. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. The brook dried up because there had not been rain in the land. And Elijah did not hurriedly go to the presence of God and knock at the door. God, God, the brook is dried. What am I going to drink? What's going to happen? You sent me here. Because the Lord had not told him the next step. You know, in our lives, we need to understand that God is a God of wisdom. And when God says, get to a place, and you get there, and if anything happens contrary to your expectation, stay there, a new door will open. Yeah. You know, sometimes we're always at just one door. And that door from behind is locked. We try to open it and open it. It will not open. Then we're dejected. My door is locked. Look up. There's another door. A better door. A greater door. A wider door into the treasury of heaven that will open for you yeah. but you know once one door is closed i will become so unhappy and so sad what am i going to do now nothing 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 heaven will do the next thing yeah. in your life yeah. in your ministry yeah. in your profession yeah. heaven will do the next thing Elijah, if you were not thinking about God and the brook dried up like that, what would you have done? I'll take a shovel, I'll take a digger, I'll begin to dig, but there's no rain from heaven. The source is getting dry because, and this was the result of the prayer of Elijah. Because you had prayed, there'll be no rain, there'll be no dew. Now your prayer is also affecting you, not only the whole land. And Elijah said, I understand, and he waited patiently. You know, if you wait patiently for the Lord, a new day will brighten up. 
what you thought you have lost, the Lord will give you multiplied fold of what you thought you lost in Jesus. Look at verse 8. We're looking at verse 8. And it says in verse 8, And the word of the Lord came unto him. Verse 1, The word of the Lord came, he delivered it. Verse 2, The word of the Lord came and he did as God had said. Now, in this new situation, a new dispensation, the word of the Lord came unto him. Can you tell that today is the beginning of a new dispensation in your life? And that's why God brought you here, that the word of the Lord will come unto you. I see that you are to climb the next rung on your ladder. You are to get to the next level in your profession. And before you can do that, he brought you here so that the word of the Lord will come unto you. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the next level in Jesus' name. Look at number two here. Number two here. Unquestioning reliance on the wisdom of God. Unquestioning reliance on the wisdom of God. We're looking at First Kings chapter uh, 17, verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, What did it say? Look at verse 9. Arise, get thee. To Zarephath, which belonged to Zidon, and dwell there. The Lord moved him from where he was to the next place he ought to be. And then he said, in uh, that verse 9, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Elijah, do you believe that? He said, of course I do. Why? If God could speak to an animal, a bird, a little bird, a raven, I've commanded the ravens to feed you there, and those ravens will understand, and they did what God commanded them to do. Now the widow woman, doing widow, is greater than the raven. And if the raven can obey the word of the Lord, I have no doubt in my heart, in my mind, in my brain, I have no doubt in my God that the widow woman will do as God has said now for you, for me. If God commanded ravens and they obeyed and they took care of Elijah, and the widow woman and she obeyed and took care of Elijah whoever has been commanded to take care of you they will obey yeah. but when they come when they come don't use the scriptures to lock your own door don't go back into history I know what ravens are to lock your own door. Don't go back and turn your Bible upside down. Zarephath is a city of the Gentiles. And then to make the matter worse, a widow woman of the Gentile community that God said he has commanded. When God speaks to you, there is but one thing to do, just obey. And as you obey, the Lord will bless you. Yeah. You know, the life in which we are living now is not a life we are quoting scriptures against our own progress. And we are quoting scriptures against our own moving forward. It's the God that gave us the Bible. And it is this God that is saying, I've commanded the widow woman there to sustain thee and to feed thee. And as the Lord speaks to you and you obey, the blessings of the Lord will never stop in your life. There are three things we're looking at, as I said, on questioning reliance now 
on the wisdom of God. Let's look at verse 10. And in verse 10, we're told, So he arose. I love Elijah. I pray that that same spirit of obedience will be in every one of us in Jesus' name. So he arose and he went to Zarephath a hundred miles ahead. And he didn't say, God, any nearby place I can get to, they broke his stride, and the ravens have not bought food, and then I'm hungry now, and you tell me to walk a hundred miles and go to Zarephath? How can that be? The Lord who has sent you will give you the strength to get there. Amen. The Lord who has reserved the provision for you over there, you will not fade by the wayside. You'll not be weakened by the wayside. You will get to where your blessing is. So he arose and he went to Zarephath and he went and came to the gate of the city. Behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks now. From the story that follows, the widow woman did not know Elijah, had never seen him. The Lord always walks at both ends of the way. As he was walking on Elijah, and Elijah was coming, he was walking on the widow without the widow knowing why she was doing what she was doing. And at the right place, Elijah got there, and the woman got there. The people who are going to lift you, the people who are going to help you, and you don't know the connection, but God who is walking on your life and God who is walking on her life, He'll bring you together. Yeah. Let me speak to somebody there before I go on. You want to get married. And the Lord has revealed. You know, the person to you, I don't even know her church. I don't even know her whereabouts. I don't know her address. And then the woman, God has commanded her. And then she's walking and walking. And look at the man and look at the woman. And they meet together at the right spot. And God will let you know that the woman I was talking about. And God will let that woman know that's the man I was talking about. And when God brings you together, God will provide all the wherewithal that you need to make that marriage a success in Jesus' name. Now, our man Elijah has come to the gate of the city and the woman was gathering sticks and he called unto her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. <laughs> you know, many, many times we're too much in a hurry and we dump the whole information on the person, the target man, the target woman. This, 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 and this. The Lord has sent me here that you will feed me and I will dwell here. You'll provide accommodation for me. You'll provide my upkeep and we we'll, we'll put the whole thing on them. Uh -uh. Let's deliver the message with a wise, edible manner. Bit by bit, muscle by muscle. Woman, can I have a glass of water there? Yes, I can do that. And then she was going. And while she was going, then in verse 11, it says in verse 11, and as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. He didn't say, I'm going to stay with you. You'll feed me tomorrow and next week and next month and next year. He just said, just a meal. 
a step at a time. You know, when we have a vision, when we have a driver, and we have a revelation as to here is where we're going, we're so much in a hurry to tell the whole story. I pray God will give you wisdom. Yes. He will give you patience and you deliver the right word at the right time to the right person in the right mood that they'll be able to take it in Jesus' name. And then verse 12, it says, And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, gentle speaking the language of a believer. The people you meet, eventually when they see you and they hear you, their language will change. You speak the language of believers in Jesus. I have not a cake, but a, hand, a, a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and tell me and die. A woman who was thinking of death, God sent his man, his servant, his prophet to go and get help there. Actually, actually, when you look at the whole story, I've commanded the widow woman there to feed thee. It's Elijah that now fed the woman and the son. And anywhere God sends us, we may take from them so that we can give to them. He took part of the last meal and then for about two years or more, he was the source of provision for that whole family. You'll be a new source. And through you, upkeep. And through you, satisfaction, saturation, supply will come to the people in your life in Jesus' name. And then we're told in verse 13, it says, And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Everybody say that. Fear not. And sometimes the prophets think that their ministry is to make people fear. Fear them. Fear the prophet. Fear the man of God. And they go about, and the things they say, their purpose, their plan, their goal, their ideal, their expectation. When I say this, people will fear me. You miss the road, and you might lose your ministry. It's not sending us to create fear, to make people fear us, or fear anything I say. If you don't do it, this bad thing will happen to you. Not Elijah. Fear not. I pray as we move about, as we climb up in your ministry, you will erase fear from the lives of people in Jesus' name. The people who prophesy, Look at this country, this will happen, and everybody is afraid, and the Christians and the believers are powerless. There's nothing they can do because I'm the prophet of God. I say, this is what God told me, and then we're afraid. We don't even know. We don't want to go to school anymore. We don't want to go to our farms anymore. We don't want to do anything, go to our profession, because prophet so-and-so has declared this, and now we're all afraid. I pray God will take fire away from your heart. Elijah said unto her, fear not. Whatever they say, they will die. Reverse that for them. They will not die. The person you are living with will not die. The people who are supporting your ministry, they will not die. The people who have lost their job and everything has been grounded, when you come to them, you will lift them out of their fears in Jesus' name. 
fear not, go and do as thou hast said. But make me first thereof a little cake and bring it unto me. And after make for thee and for thy son. In verse 14, it says, For thus says the Lord God of Israel, your barrel of meal shall not waste. Yeah. Neither shall the cruise of oil fall or fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Yeah. Say better, Amen. Yeah. Listen, God is saying, from now to there, you remain alive so that at the end of this famine, you remain alive and then on, there will be plenty for everybody, you keep alive. There are segments of life in our lives. This segment and then this segment. As we look at the future segment, the segment of plenty and the segment of abundant life, we are afraid will not I die before I get to the segment of plenty? If you obey the Lord, as you link up and hook up with the Lord, this segment of poverty and famine and insecurity and difficulty and destruction, the Lord will take you through. Yeah. As if there's no insecurity. As if there's no problem. And then when you get to the other side, the year of plenty has started. Now, keep on enjoying long and blessed life. Yeah. You see, Elijah, he believed the Lord. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, and she went, and she did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did each many days. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, and the barrel of meal wasted not. I'm going to read that again. Your barrel of meat wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according, 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 not according to the economy, according, not according to the farming, according, not according to the drought, according, not according to the condition of the nation of Israel, according to the word of the Lord, which is spake by Elijah. Amen. In your life, Amen. Look at number three here. Number three here. We're looking at unlimited resources of the wealth of God. We've covered that already. God supplied. God supplied. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You'll be shining when others are suffering. You'll have abundance when others have poverty. The hand of the Lord is upon you. Yeah. He will see you through. Yeah. He will see me through. Yeah. Me, he will see me through. Yeah. In my family. Yeah. In my ministry. Yeah. In my church. Yeah. In my community. Yeah. In the work of your hand. The Lord will see you through. We we'll come to point number three now. Point number three. I'm looking at a powerful miracle proof of an undeniable truth. We're looking at three things here. Number one, the excessive pain of traumatic tragedy. Number two, the effectual prayer in troublous times. Number three, the enabling power for towering triumph. Let's look at number one, the excessive pain 
of traumatic tragedy. We're looking at uh, First Kings chapter 17, verse 17. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. That's a long way of saying he died. Look at verse 18. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? Isn't something wonderful that Elijah, a man, actual, active, built up, having all the desires that a normal man should have. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And yet, Elijah was the widow, had nothing together of the flesh. You know, other people become so familiar. That's the woman that gave him food every day. And there was no man there. The woman was a widow. And yet, there was no contact between them that will make the woman think, look at what you have done. Because of what we have been messing up together, now my child is dead. No. Elijah knew that where he was, was it in transition it was still going to solve the problem of the nation and his mind was there all the time he wasn't looking at the woman he was looking at the nation i pray god will give you understanding and when the boy died the widow came and said oh man of God. He knew, she knew that this man was for real. If he had been doing any hanky panky, any kind of thing that the public should not know, he'll not call him after the son died. Oh man of God, I pray the man of God that God has made you, you will remain like that. Yeah. Winds blow, rains come, governments come and go, and conditions change. The woman of God, that God has made you, you will remain and abide in Jesus' name. Now, I thou come to call my sin to remembrance, to slay my son. He was accusing um, Elijah. Your life is too pure and too perfect that your presence here has called to remembrance my past sin. And now my son is dead. Now she spoke out of the traumatic uh, trouble and pain that she had. Don't, don't, uh, but don't uh, kind of analyze what people say, how people say it. You talk to me like that, man of God. They're in trouble. They're sick. They're suffering. They've lost the only treasure they have on earth. That's why they talk like that. Take it with understanding and let love and mercy and power come out from you to everybody. You will be the one that will change their situation. Yeah. Look at number two here. Number two, the effectual prayer in troublous times. When troubles come to families and when difficulties come to families, how do you pray? You pray for the power of God and God will answer your prayer. God will never allow you 
to be in the situation where there'll be a problem and you are the only man, you are the only woman there that will rely on. It will not allow a situation where there will not be enough power coming out of you to solve their problems in Jesus' name. Now, we're looking at verse 19, 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 19. And he said unto her, Give me thy son. Elijah, what are you going to do? Give me thy son. Have you raised the dead before this time? Give me thy son. Have you ever seen any trouble like this before? Now you want to manifest power you have never seen. Give me thy son. If God allows a problem to happen, in your presence is because the solution will come from heaven through you. Yeah. There's no doubt. There's no shaking. Answer will come. Yeah. Your mind is on God. Were well, you not the one that said, according to my word, there'll be no dew, there'll be no rain? It was like that. Were well, you not the one that trusted God and ravens brought her food and then the widow had been feeding you? Miracle will come through you. Yeah. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a lodge. And where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And then in verse 20, and he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, thou, my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow? with whom I sojourn by slaying her son. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, and he stretched himself upon the child three times. And he stretched himself upon the child three times. Hold on. That's not the only way to raise the dead. Understand, Elijah, a man, the child who died, a boy, not a girl, not a girl. So it's not like a lady has died, and then you want to raise the dead lady, you are a man, and you stretch yourself on her, and you say, I'm following the Bible. Look at the Bible, look at the Bible, look at the Bible. A man and a boy, not only that. When you come on to the New Testament, here is Dorcas, and she died. And the people were crying, and they were showing her all the calls she made for them when she was alive. And Peter came in. Now, Peter did not lie on Dorcas, just stood and prayed and said, Arise, and she arose. New Testament power, and now Jesus coming uh, to the daughter of Jairus, twelve years of age, a daughter, and she had died. And Jesus turned to her and said, "The little Komai, a young lady, daughter, I say unto you, arise." They didn't lie on her. You understand? As we move on from the old covenant to the new covenant, you know, we're no more at the primary stage level of uh, doing this and healing the sick and doing other things. Come on, here is a better covenant. And the better, higher, greater power of God will move in your life in Jesus' name. Hey, look at this, look at verse 22 now. In verse 22, it says, And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. Not the Lord saw the flesh contact of Elijah with the boy. It's not the contact, it's the word. It's the word, the voice. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child came into him again and he revived. And he revived. Everything that is dead in your life this morning will revive in Jesus' name. 
everything that is dead in your ministry or dead in your vision when you were younger in ministry you looked ahead and you said give me this mountain because of the water that's passed under the bridge now that vision is dead and you are slow you are sluggish you are dull you are dumb and dead it's as if nothing will happen you will rise up again power will rise up in your life in jesus name look at look at it now it says i'm coming to number three now number three is the enabling power for towering triumph then in verse 23 it says elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber out of his chamber and into the house and delivered him to his mother and elijah said and see thy son liveth and i come to tell you this morning see and your life will come with a new fresh life your ministry liveth your profession liveth your family liveth and where there's been no resources to take care of yourself everything will come alive in jesus name <laughs> verse 24 in verse 24 and the woman said to elijah now by this i know now by this i know lord the lord is sending you forth to go and do exploits in the name of the lord and the people you have contact with and the people that contact you they'll say by this i know they will forget our past failure they'll forget our past dormancy they will forget our past dullness they will forget our past incapability that we couldn't do anything before but now they will say now everybody shout now. now by this i know that thou art a man of god that thou art a woman of god let fear come out of you and let the dullness the deadness get out of you by this we will know in this land that thou art a man a woman of god and that the word of the lord in thy mouth is true where is the man where is the woman rise up and offer yourself to the lord a new day a new beginning that revival is coming in your life the power is coming in your life that the past will be washed away open your mouth and tell the lord by this i know by this i know by this i know new level next level new power next power and the power of heaven coming upon your life like never before you're a new man from today accept that a new woman from today accept that the lord himself is going to empower you enable you is going to encourage you is going to lift you up and with new power you rise up and you will do what you have never done you will go where you have never gone you will achieve what you have never achieved now your world will know now your community will know now everybody around you will know that you are truly a man of god you are truly a woman of god tell the lord tell the lord i will not look at the past i will not think of the past i will know i will not go back to the valley and the dungeon of the past i come new life revival renewal refreshing fire power fire power in your life even from today and the people around you and the people in your ministry and the people that knew you before they will say now we know that thou art truly a man of god a woman of god an Elijah of our time. An Elijah of our time. Dynamic man, dynamic woman, 
for your nation's darkest hour. Dynamic minister, dynamic professional for our nation's darkest hour. In Jesus' name we pray. If you are brother Elijah, sister Elijah, I said in Jesus' name we pray. If you are promising the Lord, I will not look back at my past failure, at my past dullness, at my past deadness, at my past inability, at my past defeat. I will not look back at my past failure. I will start a new life today, a new ministry today, a new upward climb today. If that's you there today, and the Lord is going to make a change in your life and ministry and profession, in Jesus' name we pray. Raise up those hands. You are crossing a hurdle right now. You're moving from the past to the future. Yeah. You're moving from darkness to light. Yeah. You're moving from failure to success. Yeah. You're moving from never achieving to a great achiever. Yeah. Your life from today will mark a new beginning. Yeah. It's up that I'm Father, in Jesus' name. You were looking for a man. You were looking for a woman. Now, here is a man. Here is the woman. Lord, I pray all the failures of the past, all the defeats of the past, wipe everything away in Jesus' name. Whatever anyone did that wasn't acceptable in your sight, Lord, this very moment forgive every sin forgive every transgression remake remold refashion renew everyone here today in jesus name that new power that new strength that new courage that new ability yeah. that new fire yeah. upon the altar of every heart yeah. burn every child yeah. burn every sin all the cord all the ropes that tied us down burn, uh, burn every sin in Jesus name yeah. release your servant release your man release your woman to climb higher 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 in jesus name time of farming feed everyone time of drought supply the need of everyone time when there are no resources let the resources of heaven come for each of them every one of them in jesus name lord as we go out now we'll go out to a brighter vision brighter power brighter authority and lord no enemy no ahab no jezebel will stand before anyone here from victory unto victory from success unto success from power unto power from achievement unto achievement mark everyone here man woman with the mark of heavenly divine dynamic achievement and success in Jesus name Confirm it, O oh Lord. Confirm it, Lord. 
confirm it, Lord, in the life of everyone. In Jesus' name, I pray.